Greetings, brothers and sisters. So I watched this movie. I didn't know Alec Baldwin was in it. Um, I often, you know, if I'm waiting for my wife or, you know, I have a few minutes, I'll, you know, I'll watch like movies. I might, I might record them and fast forward through them like little bits at, at a time over a couple of period of days. So I started watching this movie last night. Like it was, you know, I started in the middle. And very interesting. It's a Woody Allen movie that I kind of knew existed. I knew that Louis C.K. was in a Woody Allen movie. That's how I realized this one was that. And Alec Baldwin, well, let's just start here. This happened. Yes? Hal Francis? Yes. I'm sorry, sir. We have a warrant for your arrest. What? What? (laughs) It was an accident. (laughs) I didn't shoot anybody. Yes, sir. We have a warrant for your arrest. Is this some kind of a joke? No. Nope. You were, (laughs) you, you, you shot somebody and they died. You know, (laughs) it's not a joke at all, Alec. You're going to handcuff me? We are. I want to talk to my. You want to handcuff him. He's dangerous. He's look out. Don't, don't let him have a firearm. But first it's our duty to warn you that. Kablawi's getting cuffed. You have the right to remain silent. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Jesus Christ almighty. Kablawi, there he goes. Alec Baldwin being frog marched away. Um, but it gets more interesting than that. So right before that, his wife, who is really the star of the, the movie, Kate Blanchett, finds out that Alec P. Baldwin is having multiple affairs. And then this line happens. Lisette and I are in love. What? What? Are you out of your mind? She is a teenager, for Christ's sake. She's no pair. I mean, are you crazy? Jesus Christ, this is hard. He's very crazy, and he often uses the Lord's name in vain <laughs> for somebody who claims to be a Christian. So he's in, he's having, he's in love with a teenager, you know, something that Woody Allen's very familiar with. He'd still be doing time if he didn't hang himself in his cell. Really? Like what, with a belt? He hung himself in his cell. So Alec B. Baldwin in this movie plays a Bernie Madoff character who takes advantage of, this is her, um, Kate Blanchett's um, uh, sister. They're both adopted and um, she became sort of a, a low life, you know, being with low life type people. And Kate Blanchett married Bernie Madoff. Right. And her husband, who was played by Andrew Dice Clay, won the lottery and Alec P. Baldwin stole it for them, pretending to invest it like Bernie Madoff. But also Alec P. Baldwin in this movie took a lot of rich people's money. And then this happened. Well, it had to be a belt or a bed sheet. It could be a bed sheet. No, he managed to get a piece of rope. Plain rope. I guess he got a piece of rope in prison and mysteriously hung himself. Because, <laughs> you know, he was like Bernie Madoff. A lot of people were mad at him. And he, you know, fleeced all these people. And so that was all interesting. I want to get to Jojo Magoo in a second because he has some doozies coming up. <laughs> Typical Jojo Magoo fashion. But this movie is god awful. Like it's Woody Allen never made a good movie and I don't you know I say that and people were pointing out that Nicolas Cage I talked about Nicolas Cage and the pig and it was a masterpiece and they pointed out some good movies the Lord of War was one of them um there was some other movie uh, you know that one where he um he plays his own twin and you know that don't tell me the name of it don't care don't don't need to know (laughs) But uh, there's a few good movies Nicolas Cage made that I forgot about because the majority of them sucked, right? One of my friends um, in high school, me and my friend in high school, went to Stardust Memories. It was a horrible movie made by Woody Allen. It was, um, you know, black and white and so pretentious and the faces were warped and there was no jokes in it. Like, we thought it was going to be a comedy. Like, I lived you know, in a town that that we had to go like 25 minutes away to, to go to a, maybe even 30 minutes away to, 
to reach a, a like a, a small movie theater. We were, you know, in this suburb in the, the deep country, and there's nothing to do in our town, really, right? You know? <laughs> and we went to this movie, and it was horrible. And, like, I just knew, even as a high school kid, how pretentious it was. And people talk about Woody Allen as being some sort of genius, but he makes movies about New York, right, for the most part. You know, there's some sort of New York element. There's always elitist people, and they're very, you know, I mean, they're very neurotic like he is, and they're just hard to watch. And this movie jumps around from time periods. It goes back, has a lot of flashbacks and things like this. And it's all over the place. Poorly made movie. Woody Allen, you know, he's just so pretentious, and he really doesn't understand, you know, anybody outside of the elite class, right? The way that he characterized the blue-collar workers and things. He just doesn't understand them. Totally disconnected. It's a, you know, a train wreck of a movie. You know, I I had to jump through it. I couldn't, you know, watch it. Like, I watched it, started watching it, like, halfway through. And then I realized Alec Baldwin was playing a Bernie Madoff character, and he had hung himself. And then he had an affair, and he was going to leave his wife for an 18- or 17-year-old French au pair, (laughs) who, you know, I mean, very similar to Woody Allen, right, some of his movies. I mean, just totally, uh, you know. And then he's getting arrested. That was at the end of the movie. They show him getting arrested before he goes to prison and ends up getting some rope miraculously and hangs himself just like J.E. did, right, (laughs) all of it. So it's very interesting in that way. But it's, you know, a god-awful movie. Kate Planchette has, like, these mental breakdowns, and she ultimately breaks down at the end. Like she has these flashbacks and she's going to marry some guy who's a a politician, but he finds out about her past and dumps her and her sister's like basically throwing her out of the house and she ends up being some like homeless bag lady or something. She has these mental breakdowns that remind me of my ex. But it's interesting, you know, and I also watched this movie with my wife called uh, Motherless Brooklyn. Didn't know Alec Baldwin was in that. He played a villain in that as well. And... You know, it's funny how all these things, you know, I don't think it's funny. I think it's, you know, a part of uh, like, you know, there's foreshadowing. And you go back and look at these things, and I just happen to see them randomly. Like this Motherless Brooklyn movie I taped, and I knew it was a mystery. My wife likes mysteries. It's a pretty good movie. It's about a guy who has Tourette's. And, you know, I didn't know Alec Baldwin was in that one. I started watching this one. And I'm like, hey, Alec Baldwin's a criminal. <laughs> In this movie, and then I realized the Woody Allen movie, I'm like, oh my God, it's horrible. And so, um, you know, there's that. All right, let's go to Jojo Magoo. So Jojo Magoo had a couple of whoppers. You know, he was in rare form. First, he's here at Bob Dole's. He's eulogizing Bob Dole. Read on a number of things, but not on any of the fundamental things. We still found a way to work together. We genuinely, we genuinely respected one another as colleagues and as fellow Americans. It was real. It wasn't fake. It sounds fake. It sounds kind of fake. As soon as you said it was real and it wasn't fake, it sounded fake, right? (laughs) Like everything you say is questionable. But when you point out, hey, this is real, it wasn't fake, it wasn't, let's listen to that again. Colleagues. And as fellow Americans, it was real. It wasn't fake. Oh, Magoo, you've done it again. And we became great friends. It wasn't fake. We, it was real. We, was, uh, we were fake. We were fake. Fake? Who said it was fake? Oh, I said it was fake. Not fake. I don't know. I don't even know why fake came up. Of course it was real. And because Bob deserves a final word... I'd like to read a portion of his final message that he left to the country that I hope we all listen to in the days and weeks, months to come. And I quote Bob Dole. Bob Dole, it wasn't fake. We were friends. It wasn't fake at all. We were like like best buddies. You know, don't think it was fake. It was that of fake, 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 fake. By leading with shared faith in each other, we become America at its best. 
He went on to say, a beacon of hope, a source of comfort in crisis, a shield against those who threaten freedom. Our nation has certainly faced periods of division, but at the end of the day, we've always found ways to come together. And, and not fake ways, real ways, not, not at all fake. We can find that unity again. Then the message said, end of message. <laughs> okay, thanks for reading it. Then the message said, end of message. So I think that's when the message end. It's not fake at all. That's exactly when the, the message end. Right where it says here, the end, the end of the message, that's when it ends. And that's why I read that so you guys know the message is over. And it wasn't fake. It was completely not fake. And speaking of fake... Now our Republican friends are talking a lot about prices, but they're Repu lined up. Those Republican friends are talking about prices. Up against my Build Back Better plan, which would go right at the problem for. No, it wouldn't. You, you want to print more money. We have inflation and printing more money brings more inflation. So it wouldn't help. It's not going to help with inflation. It might help with something else. It's not going to. But you can't say it's going to help with inflation. Anybody who has any sense about the economy. Rising costs for families. Why is that? I don't want to speculate on anyone's motive, but it's always easier to complain about a problem than to try to fix it. One Republican senator even said that rising prices were, quote, a goldmine, end of quote, for Republicans politically. I thought you said you didn't want to speculate. Imagine rooting for a higher cost for American families just to score a few political points. You know, imagine using something like COVID to demonize a, a sitting president so you can win the presidency. Imagine that, rooting for COVID, rooting for closing down the economy and all these other, you know, imagine doing something like that. I don't know. You know, things have gotten really weird. <laughs> They've gotten really weird and really intense and big things are happening all the time. And, you know, it's weird out there. It's like, Something we've accepted. But if you could go back, I don't know, five years, even maybe three years, certainly 10 years, and then you just came, you know, you, you missed the, those 10 years and you were transported from 10 years ago to today, you'd be like, it's really weird 10 years, right? <laughs> well, what happened in 10 years? It's got this weird, weird even five years. And so, um, you know. Only spirituality will save this world. It's Baromano. Definitely pointing for the apocalypse and the ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.